Hi guys, so we're going to have a look at how I've painted my 3D printed Puskal Blight Lords. Starting from a black base, I've used Molotov All For One's Black, and then we're going to go in with a Nadial spray, so from underneath with the airbrush, a mixture of both that same black and Molotov All For One's Purple. Right guys, the next stage is going in from a 45 degree angle from the zenith, the top, with Molotov All For One's Natural White. It's going to be a warm colour as opposed to the grey that we're using quite a lot of other miniatures, as I want to really boost the warm hues of especially the flesh tones that we're going to put over the top afterwards. Okay, with that stage done, we're going to go in from the zenith, 12 o'clock, with Molotov's All For One's Signal White. Now, I found that this didn't airbrush very nicely, so I'm thinking in future videos I'm going to have a little play around with thinning it down. Not 100% sure what we can thin it down with. Thinners might work, it might not, but that's for a future project. As you can see, I made sure that I gave a really flat coating of that natural white and now with the signal white to the membrane of the wings that's because i don't really want to have much of a zenith or thing going on here i want to get the values from the oil painting that i'll be applying later Okay, now we're going to move on to the flesh tones. And for this, I'm going to use a mixture of contrast medium with Gulliman flesh. I find that the contrast medium helps it just flow and doesn't result in as many coffee stains. So just apply that to all the flesh areas and try to be neat, but if you get it on the other areas, don't worry, we can clean up later. So the next stage is using Skeleton Contrast Horde. I would use this neat personally since it's not a large surface area to do on all of the ropes and all the bindings and the horns on the miniature. Right, the next stage is to go in with a mixture of contrast medium and volupus pink and apply that to all of the bits of the fly's abdomen that have split and are spilling through so you can see that inner core. I'm not sure if that's actually the colour of fly's inside, it 
absolutely certainly probably going to be wrong but it's a fantasy world and that's what I've decided the inside of rot flies look like. So the next stage is going over all the wood and leather straps and everything on the model with a mixture of transparent burnt umber, carbon black ink and contrast medium. To so make my own contrast paint up or contrast style paint up gives a bit more body to those inks, you could utterly just use an off the shelf contrast paint. I just didn't have one of this colour to hand. Okay, the next stage we're going to go on to the body of the rot fly. And for the colour for that, I've gone in with two parts transparent burnt umber, one part olive green, and two parts sap green permanent, and mix that with contrast medium. I've made up a batch of it into a dropper bottle, so it means I can apply it to a wet palette later, and I don't have to faff about with mixing up that exact same colour. I can just go straight in. If I need to apply more paint to the palette, I find it very useful and I highly recommend you do that if you're going to come up with mixtures like this. Also, jot down the colours on a notepad or on your computer somewhere so you know the formulas you used. I don't normally go in with it, but if you're trying to make an army look exactly the same and you might come back to it at a later stage, it's helpful to have that to refer to. Okay, so the next stage we're going to go in with a mixture of Payne's Grey and Contrast Medium, again to give it a bit more body. We're going to go over anywhere that we eventually want to turn black. This is so we just get a nice blue hue showing through when we apply the oils later. So we're going to apply that to the eyes, teeth, any stingers on the miniature. We're going to also apply it to, most importantly, the carapace, which is a large part of these rock flies. So next we're going to go in with a mixture of two parts olive green, one part sap green permanent and contrast medium to give it body. We're going to apply this to all of the armour of the Blight Lord. This ended up drawing quite vibrant and bright and it didn't look bad. It looked quite like the artwork on the army book cover but it wasn't the look I was going for so ultimately I ended up deciding to dull it all down a little bit.
So the next step is we're going to go in with a mixture of contrast medium and purple lake. And we're just going to apply this to any cloth on the miniature. In this case, the solid little loin cloth he's got. So the next step is we're going to start work on the metals, specifically the steels, and for that we're going to use Vallejo Metal Colour Steel. So the next step is we're going to highlight that steel that we've just done and we're going to do that with Vallejo Metal Colour Silver. Now I'm going to use two brushes so I'm going to end up applying a bit of the paint and then I'll use a completely dry brush and I'll go back and I'll feather it out by drawing it over some of the steel and buffing it in. We'll just give you a nicer transition. On the edges you can just do a little tiny bit right on the corner and that'll uh, highlight it nicely. So the next stage is the copper, and for that we're going to use a mixture of Vallejo Metal Colour Copper, Green Stuff World's Copper Pigment Powder, and Airbrush Flow Improver, just to help it uh, flow a bit nicer on the miniature. So the next step is going in with a combination of transparent raw umber, carbon black and contrast medium and we're going to apply that quite liberally to all the base and we want to make sure it's really on there. You will use quite a lot at this stage I will say.
So with the brown applied to the base, we're now going to start work on the armor and some of the metals that we've done previously. For that, we're going to go in with AK Interactive Streaking Grime. We're going with a large brush. Apply that fairly liberally to all the armors. It will soak into all the recesses, all those little scratches that are on the model. Be great. Make sure you apply it to the chain mail as well and the silvers. And you can also do the wrappings and the horns as well at this stage. Just a note, when using enamel paints, you're not going to be diluting it or washing your brush with water. You're going to be using mineral spirits. Get it from a hardware store near you. Shouldn't be any more than a few pounds, whatever that is in your local currency. Okay, so when the streak and grime's applied and it's been allowed to dry for a little bit, go in with the makeup sponge dipped in a bit of mineral spirits. Make sure you touch that to a towel and really get a lot of that out there. You do not need a lot of mineral spirits and these makeup sponges hold a lot. And then we're going to wipe the miniature where we've applied the streak and grime. That's because this is a reductive technique and as you can see, nos mats coming off that and allowing that green to come through but the green underneath is going to be stained so it's not as bright as when we started next is the oil stage so I'm just going to mix up a little batch of a few oil paints that I'm going to be using across the miniature. I'm going to get a green for the wings, I'm going to get a magenta for the skin and I'm going to mix up a purple. Now purple is going to be for the cloth, not that it will be used a lot. I'm also going to use the purple on the wings as well. Right, when applying this, make sure you use a decent size brush and get it on there. And you want it to pull in the recesses of each of the little bits of the membrane. That's going to allow us to blend it because it's an oil paint, so it's not going to dry very quickly at all with some of the other colours that we use. If you spend these, you can see you can just wipe it off with a cotton bud. And if it's really a problem, dip it in a bit of mineral spirits and it will completely come off. Just as a note, I have not varnished this miniature, as you do not need to varnish miniatures when you're using oil paints. However, varnishing can give certain benefits or hindrances. For example, if you use a gloss varnish, it will pull into the recesses more, but won't stain the surface. And if you use a matte varnish, it will stain a lot of the surface, and that's because of the surface texture of the varnish that's applied. As you can see now, I'm going in with that purple. I'm just going to apply it into the corner of the wings and then try to feather it out a little as it goes further up. So while we wait for the wings to dry we can start work on the carapace and anywhere that we painted Payne's grey before. For that I've just gone in with some thinned black oil paint.
Now for the black we can just add a filter, so a very thin coat of magenta onto all the flesh. You're not going to notice this from a million miles away, but you will notice it if you put it next to a miniature that hasn't had this filter put on. It just breathes a bit more life, it just gives the appearance as if there's a bit of blood under the flesh. With the filter now applied to the skin, we're going to go into the purple, and we're just going to apply that to any of the purple cloth that we painted before. At this stage we can go on with a dry makeup sponge and we can start removing some of the black that we've applied to the miniature and I'll allow some of the blue underneath to show through. So if you want it a bit darker, you can either put more black on or you can make the Payne's Grey layer previously darker. So the next step is going in with a Payne's Grey oil paint. We're going to thin this down with mineral spirits into a bit of a wash. Slightly thicker wash maybe. We're going to be applying this over the wings that we've previously painted green and purple. And this is to unify the entire piece, at least the membrane of the wing but still have those green and purple undertones showing through kind of reminiscent of when you think of what a fly's wing looks like So the next stage is going over all the steel and we're going to give it a bit of a rusty look. So we're going to use a mixture of red and yellow as I didn't have an orange to hand but any orange oil paint will do. You could even use enamels, you get rust coloured enamels, they'll work perfectly. Also the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to all of the copper and we're going to apply turquoise over to give it a bit of a verdigris look. So with that done, the next stage is we're going to go in with Blood for the Blood God technical paint, thinned a little with water, and we're going to apply that to the volupus pink areas that we painted before. When we've applied it, we're just going to do little streaks coming down as if the blood's spilled over the skin and is running down towards the ground. I think it's quite a nice effect. Now this paint is very transparent so you need that pink underneath to act as an underpainting. Next stage is we're going to add Agrax Earthshade with a bit of flow improver just to keep things moving. I'm going to apply that to all of the rocks. Okay, so the next step at this point is to remove any masking that we've put over the flight stem. This is only because I wanted clear flight stems, but if you're not fussed and you don't mind black, don't bother applying this to start with. Just spray in black, or whatever colour you want, you're good to go. Right, the next stage is to go around the rim of the base with a mixture of airbrush flow improver and Chimera Colours Carbon Black. This is a fantastic black to do this with. It dries incredibly matte. I'm yet to find anything anywhere near as good as it. So, the 
final stage of this is just applying whatever basin you want on top and I'm going for a mixture of still water, some flowers and some grass, specifically Vallejo's water texture, still water. Not particularly sold on this, it doesn't look terrible, it's just I was expecting crystal clear and it dries murky, which I should have known since that's kind of what it looks like on the front. I've also gone for gamer grass, violet flowers and dry green 6mm tufts as well. And I'll just apply those with super glue sporadically on the miniature. And with that, it's done. Fairly happy with how it came out. It's got a nice grim dark look to it. I've been able to replicate it across an army and I'm fairly sure I could re replicate it across more miniatures that I intend to paint. All in all, good result. Well guys, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, like, comment and subscribe. Also be sure to check out our Facebook page at Wolfing Studios, the link's in the description. As always, thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time.